Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Go Blue with Stu. We are blessed yet again with Coach Saudi Washington. Coach, I really appreciate you coming on again. Man, appreciate you, man. Always good to see some of our uh, legendary alums and <laughs> do all the great things that you guys are doing. Yeah, you said this last time, and I didn't believe you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna believe you this time. Um, yeah, Coach. I mean, it is 8:21 at night on a Wednesday. Coach just picked up his son. So I really appreciate the time. You really put in a lot of effort and I, it doesn't go unnoticed. Like you're really a true Michigan man as much as, you know, that gets thrown around all the time. So I really, truly want to thank you for that. But I wanted to get into some Michigan basketball stuff, obviously, but I want to talk about you first. You're now in your 17th season coaching. Is that right? 17th year. Yeah. yeah 17th that's... year and seventh year at uh, Michigan. Seventh year at Michigan. So I'm curious because I feel like coaches don't get asked this a lot. Like, how have you improved, you know, over the years? And then, like, what are you something you're, like, trying to focus on to be better at as a coach this year? Yeah. You know, I think it's it's like anything else, Stu. Like, you just have to put the time in and, yeah. and give consistent effort. And, um, you know, you, and you have to – have a uh, or have a spirit of of learning uh, because as you know each year is a different story each kid each team is different than last year's yeah. and uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, personally get better uh, in our craft uh, the individuals that I worked for uh, Greg Campy John Beeline now Juwan Howard have really shaped uh, who I am as a coach and who I hope to be one day as a head coach. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, but at the end of the day, really, you know, it's just continuing to pour into the young man that we have in our program. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. What's something like 17th year you would look at your first or second year you and be like, what the hell are you doing? Well, like, what were you doing back then? Yeah. So, I would say uh, year one, Coach Walsh would be the guy who would try to see a freshman walk in the door and and try to change everything, you know. And year 17, Coach Walsh is a little bit more, all right, sometimes they have to see whether it works or not work yeah. before you step in, you know, because obviously whatever they've been doing up until this point, has been successful for them and you don't want to immediately feel like you got to go in and, and change some stuff. Uh, and a lot of times it's, you know, just tweaking some stuff here and there. Um, but also, and I, and it's funny you asked this because I just literally just shared this with a coaching colleague of mine who, you know, they had a disappointing open at night, but, you know, coach B used to say this all the time where, um, you know, things are never as good as they seem to be, nor are they never as bad as they seem yep. to be. So in my head, just yep. stay the course. Yeah, no, that's a uh, – it was funny, like, going through from my freshman year, like, talking to the media, and then my senior year, and they <laughs> would ask me a question, and they're like – I'm like, guys, you know what I'm going to say. Like, this win really doesn't mean much because the next mm -hmm. game is the most important. They're like, dude, this dude's a broken record. And it's cliche, but it's so true. Right. Like, if you just treat the same, the day, like every day the same, you work hard and you work, uh, you go through the process, like sometimes the wins and losses just take care of themselves, basically. That's it. That's it. And and you know what? There's, there's learning in the wins and yeah. there's learning in the losses, right? And so, you know, in this sport, you don't play a perfect game. And so there's an opportunity to grow um, in each of the challenges that, that we have on a daily basis. And um, whether it's individually, you know, with the team or personally as coaches, you know, the, the game is evolving and we got to evolve with it. That brings me, that brings up a good point where, especially with this team, you have for the last two years, especially like newcomers and freshmen that have had to play a lot and they're taking on a lot of responsibility and it's an interesting balance with new guys like, you know, not to say that new guys or freshmen can't do this, but a guy like Hunter is like, he's in his third year. He knows exactly what's going on. He He's like, this is, you know, my team, quote unquote. Now he's comfortable. Give me the ball. Yada, yada, yada. The other guy's got to come in, kind of feel it out. 
it's like a balance. I feel like with some of them where like, you're trying to instill confidence and like mm-hmm. play free, but at the same time, like reel it in, like, okay, you made all these mistakes in this game. So like, yeah. how, how are you guys balancing that? Are, are you, if, feels like it's been a good balance that first game like how are you guys trying to focus on that where it's like all right jet you had a really good game but also it was five defensive mistakes mm-hmm. yeah so i mean you know this i mean it it, it really starts in the summer in yeah. terms of building your habits i mean it, this it, this really essentially what it boils down to can we uh create uh, a collective team habits offensively offensively and defensively that are better than our opponents for a longer period of time. Right. Right. And so all the work that we do over the summer, I'm sure you uh, were on a team that had a European trip, uh, very similar to what we had this year, which for this year's team was um, right on time. Yeah. uh, Because you, as you know, those trips give you the opportunity to play against some high level opponents, uh, get to, really find some things out about yourself way earlier through games that you would, you know, you wouldn't know uh, until uh, the season starts. And so it allows us to fine tune some areas, you know, in the, in the summer and early in the fall uh, as we prepare for, for practice. And then, you know, very much like you went through coach Juan uh, is a huge proponent of film work. And yes. so uh, we're, we're grabbing a guy, like you said, like jet, and, you know, before practice, showing them 10 clips, you know, offensively or defensively, here's where you got to grow. Or, you know, then you watch the same clips again collectively as a group. And now you've seen it twice. And then you walk out on the floor and you go through a walkthrough. Now you've hit it three times. And now you oh, I got cut off a little bit, but we were talking about process and kind of just being consistent uh, with mm-hmm. new guys, freshmen, and, and just as a whole. How have you seen this group? come together really well because they look like it's a good combo so far a good base of confidence a good base of willingness to work you know has it been surprising and you know where have you seen some improvements in summer with this group well i I think a lot of it starts with their off-court connectivity toward one another and they would say that themselves in terms of like how uh, um, connected this group seems even with all the new faces uh, mm-hmm. this season so when you have that when you can start there you have an opportunity to you know have a pretty good team and you know a good percentage of our guys are workers you know we got a lot of guys who come in and, and they're off time and they get in the gym and they just work and so from that standpoint when you have guys who are connected on and off the court when they're willing to put in the work and uh, they are um, willing to learn, then, you know, that that opens up the opportunity for success. And so, um, you know, we push it, we push one another, we hold one another accountable. Um, you know, I think everybody has the right agenda in terms mm-hmm. of their mindset and how they're approaching the season. And, um, you know, we got good depth and like, Let's be honest, like having good depth keeps everybody accountable because if yeah. if you don't bring it or if you fall off, then the next guy is ready to step in your place. Yeah, like uh, not to say this is the case, but like for an example, you could say like Dougie coming in, playing intense defense is going to make Jalen play intense defense the whole time. And that was a big thing that I was really impressed with was the focus and intensity, especially from Jalen. Like not that a fifth-year guy would slack off, mm-hmm. But, like, I mean, he was playing real intense. I thought I played intense, and I was like, this guy's going all out more than I would in the game. Like, yeah. You know, 40 feet away from the basket. So tell me a little bit about – because I I mean, I, I love a lot of the guys in the team, but I really like Jalen. I think there's a lot more offensively there that he didn't show in the first game. Tell mm-hmm. me a little bit about your perspective on him, what he can bring, and what you see where, like, yeah, he can he can hoop in the Big Ten. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's like a – he has a lot of – Honestly, a lot of Eli Brooks characteristics about him uh, when you peel away the layers and get to know him as a person uh, and as a player. Um, I think there's that natural learning curve uh, that you have when you move up in levels in terms of of conference play. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like once he really kind of gets settled into that, we'll see the true uh, Jalen Llewellyn. But like he's been tremendous in terms of his 
his work ethic, in terms of his coachability. Um, and then, you know, like you said, like uh, there's healthy, uh, there's a lot of healthy competition uh, yeah. all over the, all over the, the roster. And, um, you know, he's been, he's been bought in since day one. We're going to lean on him a, a lot, you know, in his, in his um, uh, maturity mm. uh, on and off the floor. And uh, I, I, like you said, I think he's going to be a very uh, consistent piece for us come Big Ten play. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of hope in him. And I think it's going to be a lot more that he shows that what well, definitely wasn't shown in the first game. I think he's going to keep building on it. I mean, I really like his game and just kind mm -hmm. of his mentality. And, like, I think it's a good combo. It's it's all over the court. It seems like guys mesh in many different ways. Like, you got Jason, Will, and Terrence Leading, and Hunter can talk, and Jalen is just going to be, like, calm and cool and lead by example and be steady. And then you got a lot of energy just in so many different spots. So it seemed like this yeah. team meshes in so many different ways, like offensively, defensively, and then they push each other. Like it's a rare combo to have guys like each other and also compete at the same time. Yeah. No, a lot of teams. I know you can attest to it. Like usually it's like, if it's a lot of competition, guys are just going at each other, even off the court. So it's, yeah. Tough. You, well, you want the, you want the balance and, yeah. you know, coach Jawan today even mentioned in our, you know, post, IPFW evaluation before we got into the Eastern Michigan scout, how, you know, guys like Jalen T will, you know, like what they did from a scoring perspective doesn't jump out at you from the stat sheet, but everything else that they do on the court that night impacted yeah. winning. Right. Yeah. And when you have such a balanced team, you understand one night it's going to be Hunter. And the next night it could be Jace or jet or Jace or, you know, the next be Kobe or, you know, so when you when you when you have that kind of balance and you don't care who, you know, kind of stands out in that particular night, then you got something potentially special. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch, especially when you got Hunter down low is going to get so much attention. It'd be like be like some games Jalen could get eight threes and Jet would get two and then it could flip the next game or Terrence gets six. So like, you don't even know what's going to happen at all times. You just as long as they go in, yeah, exactly. as long as they go in, we don't care where they come from. Exactly. I'm curious about the sets. I want to ask you about the offense and some of the sets. I mean, there's a lot of the system we talk about, you know, these are all outsiders talking, right? Like you, you're inside the meetings, you're in the game planning, you see the film, you break it down. From an outsider's perspective, you see, a little more like motion, a little more free for all last year. This year, maybe I see like a little more sets, but there's like certain things with movement that were like amazing. There was one play, it was in the exhibition game. It was a sort of pin down handoff to the right side. And then on the left side, it was a pin down. Then it was like a, a flip back. And then Hunter came back for a ball screen and it was jet and he got like a step back three and i was like mm -hmm. how do you guard that play and i feel like i didn't see that last year am i am i wrong was there more is there more emphasis on some of this movement well, stuff? well i mean that's that's always been our emphasis and a lot of what we're doing is the same and then obviously you know as coaches you know we want to grow too and so yeah. you know coach Juan has been phenomenal in terms of you know adding the right set so the right package at the right time um but you know the 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 foundation of our offense is player movement and ball movement, and so we don't want the ball to stick. Yeah. And so, um, you know, a, a lot of the sets are very similar, but um, the understanding, right, of the why behind the sets that we run, will determine if it's fluid or you know if it's not as fluid or if the spacing is correct or not correct. And so, I mean, you played for you know, the, 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 ultimate the, set guy. the yeah. offensive, the offensive uh, guru. And mm -hmm. so don't mess up his offense, right? No. Yeah. Every detail of that offense from the passing lead to the pivot foot, to outside the hand. Yeah. area, the outside hand, which we still do. We still yeah. do a lot of those drills because yeah. it, it, it translates. Right. And so, um, you know, in the moment, right. You probably thought, 
man, why, why are we doing this? Like, this is so elementary. And then when you put the offense together and you understand, oh, wow, yeah, this is why we, you know, pivot and donut and waffle yeah. and, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, all the other terms that only somebody like you and I and, yep. and your future and your former teammates know. Yep, that is it. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. I mean, you're you can have all the best sets of the world, but if the guys aren't going to run it and execute it, mm-hmm. you know, then it means nothing really. So this is on, oh, you know, there's a lot of this is on shoulders, players, uh, player shoulder, mm-hmm. excuse me, where they have to execute that vision. I think last year there was, you know, guys kind of looking at each other, standing around like, all right, are you going to score? Are we going to move? And I feel like this team's bought in a little more to like, we're, we got to move now and got to keep going. And it's just made things a lot easier. Now, I think you got a little more confidence top to bottom. That's just my personal opinion. And a guy like Jet, who's come in super confident, Jalen's confident, Hunter's confident, Terrence knows what he's doing, and this all in the starting lineup. And then Kobe has really just blown me away with his confidence. Not that he wasn't capable of it, yeah. but it's really nice to see that he is – uh relax and exploring his talent i feel like last year he was you know shoulders up tense and this year he's like all right screw it like i'm just gonna let it fly where has that been a process talk with him Did, was it kind of a flip of the switch or what was that well any any coach would tell you thank god freshmen are only a freshman for a year right? yeah <laughs> yep and so but to to for kobe he had a front row seat to be able to learn from one of you know, our, our Michigan greats and Eli Brooks, yeah. you know, on both sides of the ball. And yeah, you know, could he have sat there and got discouraged about his playing time and, you know, and, and, and opportunities he could have, but that's not the kind of kid he is. In fact, he's the opposite of that. He's had a tremendous, tremendous off season. And, you know, typically your biggest jump is going to be from your freshman year to your sophomore year. Mm. So he stayed on campus, got in the lab with Sam Man, you know, all spring and summer, got, you know, I think he put on like 15 pounds of muscle. And um he, he and he's a big um film study guy, uh, like on his own. And um so like when he comes into our film session, he already has most of the time has pretty much watched what we're already going to watch. And so now as you know, when you see the game happening before it actually happens, now you can put yourself in position to really plays and just be your authentic self. And, um, you know, he's definitely still got areas to grow, but I think you're right in terms of his confidence level um, early in the season. It's amazing. It's hard to articulate to people, not to be like snobby, but to articulate to fans who haven't played where you get this, once you know, where all other nine players are on the court and you just have like this calm sense you're like yep i'm in help side this there's a guy that might be setting a flare screen on me right now but i'm gonna get in the like there's just a weird confidence where you calm down and everything slows down it feels like that's what's happened with kobe a little bit like on both ends and that's interesting that he has been a film study guy like that because that's his i mean reps obviously but Mm -hmm. on film study beyond that and being yeah. honest with yourself, like, all right, this is my mistakes and watching a guy like Eli. So that's interesting. I, I read a quote, I think, from Martelli. Coach Martelli was like, asked uh, Kobe who is emulating the most. He's like, yeah, I watched Eli, which is then very interesting because you don't you don't find that very often. Yeah. And it's a humble thing to do, watch a teammate. But, I mean, it's a perfect example. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty fun to see and pretty telling about this team, kind of where they're at with everything, which is a little unique, no? Well, well, the one thing that was really consistent, Eli was going to do it right. Yeah. You know, like he was going to make the right decision. Now, whether it executed to its full fruition, you know, sometimes it did. Most times it did. Sometimes it didn't. But uh, you're right. It it takes a humble spirit to sit back and say, you know what? I don't know it all. Here's somebody who has won a lot of game in this, won a lot of games in this program, has some championships in this program. Mm-hmm. And I can just watch him and, and do the right things. And now it was funny, you know, especially from a defensive perspective, because that was probably his biggest, Kobe's biggest growth area. Um, it's funny to hear him um, talk and teach some of the younger guys or the new guys, yeah. um, you know, our principles and techniques and stuff like that. And you're like, 
you know, you sit back like a like a proud uncle and you're like, yeah. <laughs> there we go, young fella. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That was always one of my favorite parts of playing, like being a senior, especially. And coach is like, yeah, you know, you get to sit out this passing drill now. You've done it two million times and now you get to coach up. And I'm like, this is the best. This is it. Right. When you get that comfort, it's a it's a whole other world. But yeah, that um overall, you know, the Fort Wayne game, things just seem to be clicking um and definitely like building up like it looked like the plan was being put in place now with mm -hmm. eastern michigan coming up you got you know amani bates who's been talked about about as much as any other player in the last few years uh and who i'm really interested in watching who i haven't watched and could be i think a, a headache for college basketball for a while is the point guard Farrakhan. so how are you guys game planning I, and i actually haven't watched too much of them are they playing a lot of one on one? Are they using ball screens with Farrakhan? Like, what what are their tactics offensively? Listen, they they play fast. They got multiple push guys. You know, they they got some dudes that can play. Like you, yeah. you, everybody obviously will mention Imani, but yeah, you got Farrakhan, you got Acuff, you got a lot. Uh, they got a young uh, player, Lovejoy, who's who's really good, and um, you know, a, 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 a whole host of transfers. And guys who have been around a little bit and, um, you know, they, they spread the floor, they can shoot the ball, they can uh, uh, attack off the dribble. So, you know, again, you go back to what we, what we talked about earlier is our habits, right? Our habits have to, our principles and habits have to be better than their principle and habits over yeah, okay. a long period of time. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, you know, you said they got a lot of players and you want to keep guys focused on like the big picture. So it's not like, all right, we're going to stop Imani and that's the game plan. Like, that's not what it is. Mm -hmm. But is anybody, I mean, like this kid's gotten so much hype over the last few years and he's in that was an exhibition game. I mean, this kid's, this kid's confident. And I feel like as a player, I would see some house. I'm like, all right, um, this is, this is going too far. Was anybody like, stepping up and is there you know someone who's going to be on him or is it just like we're game planning and this is us and like you got to come through us well like i said i mean if, if you're game planning for one guy that's that's the wrong mentality like yeah you, they got a lot of homegrown kids on that on that roster yeah. who are really motivated to play uh against a michigan wolverine team in the lca arena you know there's a lot of reasons for this game to have the excitement that it's going to have in both teams early in the year, you know, you're really trying to find some things out about yourself. And so um, I'm excited, you know, for our guys to see how uh, we respond uh, to a talented uh, Eastern Michigan group uh, in that environment. And um, you know, that's, that's the focus. Yeah. Yeah. No, I figured you'd say, you know, stay steady. The coach, you're just, you're too calm and steady. Uh, but I know, like, as a player, you'd be, I mean, you'd be going through the game plan, but in the back of your head, you're like, Abani's <laughs> not scoring on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I feel like you well, get Well, that. hopefully, hopefully that's that, that's that yeah. attitude about everybody because. No, for sure. You, you, you said it, you said it right off the top. Fair kind, oh, yeah. get a bucket. Get a bucket. Cuff, get a bucket. Yep. Love, Joy get a bucket you know and so those are three other guys not named Bates who can really hurt you yep that's true yeah you got to be ready and that new arena is nice and they're hyped so it should be fun it'll be a lot of fun to watch uh I'm excited for it coach I appreciate you coming on this was awesome got some insight on everything that I want to get some insight on some Review the last game, preview the next one, and I wish you the best of luck. Uh, I know you're a busy guy, so I'm not going to promise we can get you back on, but maybe maybe one of these days down the road in the, uh, this season. So, But I appreciate you. Good luck with everything, and, yeah, hopefully we'll talk soon. Yeah, for you, brother, anytime, and can't wait to have you and, and your uh, oh, yeah. brothers in the house and you back in Chrysler. Oh, yeah. You can feel some of that Ann Arbor love again. It's yeah, if you special, guys man. if you guys want to see the uh, 2012 team, not as special as the 2013 team that will be featured <laughs> Michigan State weekend at Michigan. But yeah, we're trying to come back for that reunion game. So I think it'll I think it'll be a packed house. I mean, my mom already uh, made <laughs> hotel reservations. She couldn't get one at the Marriott down in Edinburgh. It's packed. <laughs> so right. I feel like it's going to be already a hype weekend. People are going to be excited for it. So yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll be back in Chrysler, and yeah, it'll be fun. Appreciate you. Yeah.
All right, brother. Hey, right. stay safe out there and go blue.